Welcome back to Morning Express. Now let's uh, delve into matters in the news. Starting off with the federal government's appeal to the IMF to come to the country's aid at a time when flooding continues to ravage parts of the country, causing a what is described as a dampened outlook of the country on the international stage. Now, of course, the crisis rocking the oil and gas industry and the oil output crisis is also another issue that continues to uh, rock Nigeria's economic standing globally. Well, that being said, we are now being joined by an economist and a public affairs analyst who is a regular on the program, a passionate Nigerian who is always ready to lend his thoughts to issues of national interest. Dr. Aliu Elias is joining us in the studio right now. Hello and good morning, Doctor. Good morning and thank you for having me. It's wonderful to have you on set this time around now. The last time we had a conversation, it was virtual. Right, it was virtual. I actually went for CNG conversion. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> well congratulations. Thank you. You have finally done Honestly, it. Honestly. After don't... how many months? <laughs> At least four months trying four months. to yes trying to get it fixed no you go to one station they said no and you feel a form they will be waiting for them to call you yes so the challenge is that even at all you want to do it now is not what you can do now yes they have to schedule you for at least two three months before you can be invited well the last paper i read here on the on, on the lineup the president said it's either you buy fuel for 1000 naira per liter or you buy cng for 200 naira per Per meter. Per, yes, uh, but the thing is, it does not as, actually come cheap because yeah. the way you put it is not correct. It's not correct. Well, uh, well, CMG, C CMG is not for the poor. It's not actually easy. I actually did it at nine hundred thousand. Uh, I'm sure you know what nine hundred thousand is to bring that together. Then we have another challenge now. The challenge is that you also queue to buy the CNG. Interesting. I'm telling you, that's another. To go to the airport road, you see a lot of car. In fact, you have to calculate at least one hour, 30 minutes yes. before you can buy. That's the problem. But in terms of uh, the mileage coverage and the consumption level, it cannot be compared to uh, to, to, fuel, to, fuel. To, to fuel at all at all. But I think government need to do more to make sure that CNG is available at every, virtually like brick and mortar at virtually every two, three stations yes. around you. You know, and also, you know, it's not about the our conversion itself again now it's about you know we only have two choices now is either you go to kuwa road or you go to lube road yes that's the only place which is not a good one i actually traveled to some part of kogi state as, as well okay it be precise it's called that the cng there was only one one you know, station there's only one entire station for the entire city so it, 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 it's it's something that we need to quickly and i think government should unbundle that area so that private sector can actually come around to actually invest uh, their money and, and that will make it more accessible right but don't you think that would also make it more expensive when they when the private sector comes in i mean it's a capitalist society a businessman right. would always want to make no. profit as an economist we believe in competition okay. Com competition is always good for business it's only government to create an environment and not to give one person opportunity compared to the other just like what is happening in the refinery now you could see dangote have the only refinery that is working that you have create room for monopoly but whereby you have different you know and i also want to challenge the uh aliko dangote uh, an industrialist by excellence why will he also have his own truck queuing for cng where we that have small small car key you have to go to the airport too. they have almost a thousand uh you know truck queue to also buy CNG gas. CNG gas. I, I think in his capacity, he can even have 10 stations well, that, 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 that will cater that, to that his that people. The, so the long queue of that exactly along the airport. Along road, the airport road. Very close to I mean, in fact, the road is getting. You know, you, you could see the road is it's getting already, affected. It's already affected. Affected. So I think they should do something meaningful about it because you cannot tell us to go for CNG. Uh, perhaps you know this Dangote has been enjoying it so much for long. Yes. If I if you look at the truck, they have one big uh, uh, middle thing that is yes. assuming it that according to analysis, what would take them maybe 1.5 million from Lagos to Abuja could take them 150,000. I look at that benefit there. So I think by now, if you have Dangote petrochemical, Dangote refinery and petrochemical, yes. by now you should also open up. You know, go to downstream uh, well, well, and a, open as up a businessman, a CNG. I Perhaps one of the things that is in the pipeline for him. That would have you never know. the I mean, effect. It, it, it started um, off from cement and then transition to sugar, salt, other uh, 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 products. But I must well. tell you, that's the major thing that is affecting us. 
we cannot buy it. before you just go three four cars you you know but, but now, now you have to wait you have for to, a long and, of trucks. and you see those trucks they are not the same area but the, where you are serving the pump the truck you're also serving the the cars okay. so i think government need to do more to make sure that we have cng stations where people can actually go if you have like 15 20 in abuja that would have solved just the problem the way every corner exactly you look at so now my cng is getting reduced and i'm also thinking how do you kill? How do I kill? You know, Nigeria would say, be right of, of problems. May God help us. Well, well let's, let's hope that in the coming days or weeks, uh, something happens. Four well, months. Congratulations. Thank it's you not so easy. much. It's not easy. And uh, now that I'm, I'm thinking about starting my own, in, in November, I might get it in, in February. February. <laughs> That's well, Nigeria well, let's, for you. Let's get down to business. Uh, right. Uh, the federal government is seeking IMF's help. You know, in a situation like this where reports, especially the Maiduguri flooding and then the flooding in Lagos State recently and Bielsa as well, uh, you know, have affected a lot of people, damaged a lot of property. People are being thrown into poverty due to that. And of course, the millions, the, the barrels of crude per day that are being, you know, uh, drawn out of the soil, which Nigerians are sort of you know, insinuating that there might be some sort of crisis in the oil and gas industry. All of these things are making the Nigerian, the federal government to call for help from the IMF. The IMF is also stating uh, <laughs> on its part that uh, the economy is not really doing well. The projection is not uh, doing well. As an economist, what, what are we looking at and why, why do we see the federal government crying to the IMF again? Wow. Uh, well, the first thing I would say is that we must acknowledge that um, the flood issue in Nigeria cannot be attributed to force major, yes. which is natural, uh, an act of God. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, this one is on your dam in the south, yes. and you are seeing it coming up. What are you supposed to do? At least we have about 10 dams in Nigeria. We can increase the dam and make sure we project, in as much as we have, is it now met, Nigeria Meteorological Agency. Agency. They can tell you that, so, so, so period, there's going to be more water, there's going to be more rain. Nothing stop Nigeria uh, to be proactive, yes. uh, especially the Nigerian government, uh, fix that thing open up some down you know create another dam look at what happened in the medigree do you know it happens 1994 at the same level you know the same some to some extent the same level of the effect mm -hmm. and you have not done anything meaningful and somebody's starting with responsibility so sometimes if you even go to imf they'll see you as an unserious element Fellow, because yes. every year you come you, you experience the same issues and you're not giving uh, another uh, action that will make sure that it's really bring it down then you, you could also see that imf is going back and forth that's what i should say because imf will come and say they are expecting 3.4 percent uh, in your gdp yes. but now they say 3.1 percent and i can also tell you the imf as uh, the advisor who advise us on what we are doing that is also bringing down the gdp which is somehow contradicting you know we say the floating we of the naira floating of the naira first subsidy. subsidy these are all imf to, policies exactly, that were implemented via the federal tariff government. you know these are the things that you tell us to do you know increase taxation you know these are the things you tell us and now we are having the negative externality of it and which is the major problem so for me i think nigeria should start looking at their own economies and put up a direct solution to it but because now Nigeria should be having more money. You know, that's another thing. Yes. Having removed for a subsidy, we expect us to have more money. But you float the Nera and Nera eroded the, you know, the, all the benefits. Yeah. And when we talk about FAC, you know, every money Nigeria is getting, we are putting it to FAC and sharing within state. And there's nothing to show for it. And so that's why sometimes we think government should tarry and uh, should reduce the nail view at which they put all the money to FAC and intervene in some projects directly. So imagine government gave in the past government gave each state 10 billion for cng buses so let, let's think as an economy let's look at basic economies okay. why don't you use that money and said create two cng in each Ga state gas station. gas station in each state and create maybe little uh, material for people you know it solves a lot of problems because you have given them money how many buses have they purchased have they even purchased the problem you know how many people are those and, buses? And you know, taking? initially when when the whole CNG buses talk came about or came into the picture, I was having a picture of all these coaster buses or the the long luxury buses. You know, just like the ones that uh, ply the roads in Abuja. Right. And, but surprisingly, when I saw a picture of the CNG buses, I I noticed they were just normal sixteen, 16 seater <laughs> buses. What well, the, the the thing is, you know. 
when we talk as an economist, our thinking is a bit, uh, you know, long run effect. So for me, buying CNG, buying buses wouldn't have been the, problem, the solution. Setting up, C Set setting up, up the infrastructure would have and been make it more easier. In fact, I was happy when I got to Okini, as I said, I saw uh, some uh, keke, you know, all of them have the gas, the gas you know, cylinder, cylinder, you know, everybody's, you know, things make, is much more. So I think government should be conscious of creating infrastructure, yes. enabling the environment, availability of CNG, not going to go and buy a bus. Remember in the last, in, uh, is it October 1st, government said 64 buses for, I uh, guess, uh, 64 CNG buses for uh, NANS and for NLC. And I wonder in my, in my mind, how, how can you say 64? 64 for each state or for each local government because i don't understand i want to, you want it to be you know to make meaningful impact so for me invest more on infrastructure I mean, it's, and it's just, environment it's just a lot of efforts not channeled in the right direction right but but when let's come back to the issue of the federal government and the imf uh, dr Liu. i believe right now that a majority of nigerians are wondering why does the federal government continue going back to the imf when already we are burdened by so much loan and loan servicing that is almost crippling the economy. Right. Why do they keep going? I, I don't think, you, you know, borrowing is not a bad thing. It, it's, it's not a bad thing. It's but, not a but, bad but thing for a, us. To a layman, he just assumes, oh, they just borrow monies from IMF, they borrow money mm. from the Pari Club, and then they don't know what this money is. The question are is, what are you borrowing for? That's the bigger question. The question is that, have you exhausted your own internal ability mechanism before you go borrowing and that's why we want to tend to uh, uh, appreciate some borrowing whereby they said project tied loan yes. when china give you money they follow you to the project they will, they will be involved in the what in the, in the, in the project so the long run look at our railway in abuja you know you can they, see, were, they were, they were they, even up to now they are still i think they still manage it you know, sometimes you will love something like that because in the long run, it might not bring that, it, it might not pay itself, yeah. but you know, look at things that are around it, life that it makes easier for people, you know, and the economic impact in the long run will pay for it. So I think government should stop borrowing for such things. Uh, for me, if you have more money now, why don't you project to that area? Yes. You know, now we are also preparing budget for next year. For next year. So now it simply means that next year budget borrowing, you know, what they are saying now is going to be next year budget. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how it is. So but I am looking at a situation whereby we say, okay, let's just hold on uh, for borrowing and see how things actually run. Because it's sometimes you need to tighten your belt yes. and see how. So the judge should look at loopholes where money are not supposed to go, cut it, you know, and make sure. And that's why some of the uh, advice of the uh, Taiwo, are your daily tax man, yes. uh, tax chairman? I uh, would say bring some a lot of uh, proposition. We want to see it working. Among the proposition, they said if you are any more than 100 million, you'll be paying 25% tax yeah, on yes, it. Yes. And you know, it's elitist in nature, it it's going to, it's going to affect the elite. It so, is. we want to see such thing working, not you going quick to go and borrow. Why not exhaust those internal mechanisms, do a progressive tax? Now, 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 there is there is um, a, a statistics here concerning the Taiwan uh, Ayodele um, proposition. Uh, pro pro proposition, and of course, this is um, President Tinubu's transmitted tax reform bill to the National Assembly, uh, which is which has been transmitted for consideration. Now, it says here for personal income tax, first uh, from twenty twenty six onwards, right? First eight hundred thousand naira, zero percent. Next, 2.2 million naira, 15%. Next, 9 million naira, 18%. Next, 13 million naira, 21%. Next, 25 million naira, 23%. And above 50 million naira, 25%. Personal income tax. Right. How do you break this down to the common man? That if he earns money, if he earns, say, 2.2 million naira through his business, as his personal money, he's to remit... 15% of that money to the federal government. Right. I, I think uh, a lot of things need to be exhausted in that side because I, take my time to, I took my time to actually read through. You also said that if you are a, uh, uh, what do you call minimum wage, yes. it will not be taxed. You know, that's if you are minimum little. wage. Uh, yes, if your own is the smallest, like yes. 70,000, yes. they will leave you, they will not tax you so that you have purchasing power to do other things. So now, ideally, it is not bad to go prog progressive. The more you earn, yes. the more you pay. The less you earn, 
the less you pay it's quite a clear thing but the thing is that a lot of nigerians want to avoid taxation you know and some of us want to see okay the way you are collecting what are you using it to do you know let's even leave personal income tax because you know why you cannot dodge that is a direct thing government will find a way to collect it direct if it's from the source yes. as it's coming they are removing but let's talk about businesses they said if you are less than 25 million naira income as a business you don't know they will exclude you uh in VAT. you know 25 million naira 25 income. million less okay do you get above you'll be charged and which is a good one he also said they want to remove double taxation you know federal government will tax you uh state will tax you look at will tax you on the same business especially in telcos yes they now say no let's federal government collect or uh, remit 90 percent to the state you know a lot of things is there but i think these elites would they be able to pass this that is the question that's that that's a very big question now let's talk about VAT now now that you have raised the issue of taxation i want us to exhaust it in totality <laughs> right. VAT has been one issue that most nigerians uh, well they have accepted that it has come to stay the value added tax 7.5 percent going to 10 going to 10 percent <laughs> at the moment now going to 10 nigerians are already crying for the year 2025 that is set at 10 percent for the years 2026 2027 2028 and 2029 that is set at 12.5 percent yet another increment and by 2030 up onwards that will be set at 15 percent so from now till 2030 there will be a 100 percent increment in vat right. how realistic is this and how accepting do you think nigerians will be of this reality well there's an argument that says that we pay less tax uh which we could say well to an extent yes but the question is this i want it to be tied to something so now if you say you increase by 2025 yes. you know uh to from 7.5 to 10 a percent what are you giving to businessmen yes that's the question if you say you are increasing it and this is the enabling and environment right. you take advantage of this and you have said you not collect from 25 million you know yes. uh, below if you can actually match it with what you are going to offer it's not a problem if you have a booming economy and an enabling the environment it won't cost you anything to actually pay because you are any higher and you'll be free to pay but by the time you have bad road bad network you know in uh, energy energy cost you know a lot of things that you know cost problems mm. if you have it you won't be happy to pay you won't be happy you'll be happy to pay like i said if cng actually work and you, you a transport company is using cng you'll be, you wouldn't mind to pay tax because yeah. you say okay i'm paying less in this area and i'm going to you to know pay, pay in the other yeah. area so if we also say electricity you know away from this band a you have energy security as expected you wouldn't mind because you know why you'll be using one to balance the yeah, other yeah. one but in the case whereby everything is negative and they are expected to pay then just as we find it difficult to pay so it's it give us uh, as expected uh, then we'll do as expected some analysts have shared the opinion that the taxation method now you are an economist that the taxation method in the country is one that uh, takes the widow's might from the poor and also takes the same amount of the widow's might from the rich. Too bad. That that's what we're actually saying. Be, be, because because what the poor woman or the woman selling tomatoes in the market to feed her children or feed her family pays as VAT when she purchases an item is the same thing Dangote or an Otedola or market. a billionaire somewhere will pay to purchase something, seven point five percent. You know, you know, you know. There's what is called elitist theory, who okay. says that the few makes the law for the majority, yes. which is a serious problem. And now, let me give you a close example. According to custom, those that have private jets yes. are expected to pay a particular amount, and they gave them that if you don't pay within this social period, this is an ABC will happen. Remember, a poor man does not own a jet, so having given that period do you know that that period elapsed the same agency was unable to implement the rather what extend yes but when it's come to the poor what you say you are going to start this today they don't change their mind they don't because they don't want to do anything that will going to affect the elite yes and that's the major problem and that's why the, when the bill is going to the national assembly i'm curious and i have cautious optimism that will these people 
actually you know do something that will affect them to an extent and that's the problem so the poor must abide by the law while the rich must have their way the way they want which is a bad one and that's why those are uh, other claim they don't do it like that if i you, you pay according to your earnings any, which is progressive is, taxation is that, is that why the personal income tax is perhaps a good idea at the moment? very good idea because if i'm earning 2.5 million and you're taking more from it no problem i'm any high yes. but if i'm earning seven hundred thousand error and you are still taking, you are the, still same. taking the same it's it's appalling so and that's the thing well as uh, dr alio has rightly put it it's all about uh, personal income tax and also about ensuring that what you earn is the level that you are taxed in there should be some sort of uh, uh, you know disparity with regards to how much people pay at as taxes to the federal government let's move away from the issue of taxation now and the economy and touch a little bit on politics where the people's democratic party continues to grapple with an internal crisis rocking it and of course the anti-demagogue plot is thickening this is coming in the wake of a neck meeting which will take place tomorrow thursday pdp is uh, gradually becoming an old shadow uh, of itself a shadow of its own self. Uh, a lot of people have shared this opinion via social media, on television, in writing. Uh, is PDP gradually becoming obsolete and uh, irrelevant in the Nigerian political space? Well, let me join people that have been saying it <laughs> to, to let you know that PDP is getting weaker uh, day by day and it's so sad. This is not how APC came as a position and took over from them they came in a robust manner in an organized manner you know and take the mantle of the leadership in unity in unity so the, and the sudden part of it is that pdp is aligned the same apc to influence a lot of things in them because of just one thing they have the hammer they don't know how to use it because if you're a political party guided by rules and regulations if yes. somebody errs, the best thing is to, to caution the person immediately so that others will not actually uh, do the same thing, yeah. you know. And part, uh, another thing is that when you continue in a negative trajectory, you call for a problem. When we have Damagum, who is the vice chairman from Northwest, I assume, mm -hmm. whereby the North Central is the chairman. Well, if you are even having a tearing person, two months, three months, you know, let him go. Bring another person from the middle uh, belt, North yes. Central, to actually solve the, to take the mantle of the leadership. And that's what is actually causing the problem. But I, I heard that uh, maybe uh, uh, um, the former Senate president is also warming up to be the, the chairman that's of the uh, political... Senator David Mark. David Mark. So, I, and I, we, they have a lot of... Even Bukola Saraki is there. They are from the middle belt. We have uh, Salau uh, from Kogi. A lot of people are there that they can actually uh, bring about. So, until they get to settle it very well and they should learn how to use their armor yes. because if somebody is influencing a negative is bringing a negative uh, influence you know narrative to you it's just to let him go because now according to uh a uh, chairman of uh, apc yes. uh former governor of kanu state ganduji he said we'll take all those states from you he, we'll, he used the term capture, <laughs> he, he, will will capture. capture he will capture all those states and, and Osh, the entire Osh, southwest uh, uh, right that statement is quite uh, you know <laughs> and somebody now very ask, daring. somebody now asking how about your state? You know, politics, you politics can be funny. <laughs> that have you captured your own state that you're coming to capture? But the thing is this, if the narrative continues like this, PDP will lose all those. In fact, the governors of PDP themselves, they will submit themselves back to, you know, look at what, look at uh, your state. You know, if you look at how your state governor is part of the G7, right? Yes. And now, G, G7 or G5 or G7. G, G7. G7. Think, yes. It's part of the G7. And now it's romancing, you know, uh, PDP. And he's have opportunity of also going to the other way because you know he doesn't have mandates next. He doesn't have mandates to C certainly he, no. If I don't want to go for senator, you can go to any other party because he, he, if if he perform, you know they will surely yeah, follow any way. So certain it's, level of influence in the state and it's also not a good uh, you know narrative with the the the, the party present chair. So I think they should do the needful. Uh, what is organized but my fear is that wouldn't they go to court again because court is becoming the final arbiter yes. they are the final arbiter but in politics they should exhaust the political you know solution before they will go to to court i'm also thinking don't you think some people will still go to court but, but most, <laughs> what, what, what most people will be looking out for is the next meeting that would hold tomorrow 
you know, when Damagun was suspended very briefly and then reinstated back, right. uh, people, when he was suspended, it was, it was almost like a breath of fresh air for most PDP party supporters and party members as well, where you saw online everybody was jubilating, jubilating. that, and then suddenly Damagum comes. He's Bauchi governor. I don't know. What, how, what, I don't know. What, what, what should PDP supporters or maybe enthusiasts be looking out for in the next tomorrow. meeting tomorrow? Well, for me, let me see. I'm not a party, their party member, okay. but I want to see Damagum stepping down yeah. and allowing uh, somebody from the uh, middle belt uh, or not center. As it is to take that mantle of leadership that will bring you fresh air and yes. they must bring somebody who is very experienced and influential that can actually make things up because you know you know it's but much of body language sometimes That's when true. you know when you see if you even look at damagun uh, as a person uh, for me it looks much more calm he's very calm <laughs> compared to you know the expected uh, you know you know uh, how do i call it um the disposition, agile, the agile, agile vibrant, disposition uh, of a party uh, person. Yes. You know, when you want to take leadership, sometimes you need to be a bit rugged politically so that you can actually influence a lot of a lot of things. And some people suspect that Wiki is also uh, influencing him to an extent. To an extent. So what's so that? To, to remain in the party. To remain, in the, remain as chairman as of chairman. the party yeah. because you know once the mantle of leadership is taken away from him. You know, it's possible we can, you know, have influence And there might the be person. some people with a personal vendetta against Wiki that will strike. Exactly. Him. Immediately they assume the office, he may be the first person. Because, you know, ideally, you are in a, you are in APC government. And we can also see what is happening in, a, in your states, you know. So people, uh, remember, that governor is even PDP. For me, PDP is not trying to support that man as expected. So all these intrig intrigues is the major thing that we'll see playing out tomorrow. Well, we continue to look out for um, the next meeting with the PDP uh, tomorrow, Thursday, and see what the outcome would look like. And just as much as Dr. Alio has mentioned, he is expecting Damagum to step down. Now, while on one hand, some people want him away, others want him to remain in the party. Why? I do not know, but tomorrow we will find out. Moving away from that issue, former President Chief Olusegunov Basinjo has made a very big statement recently in the news. First, it was that Nigeria is breeding future Boko Haram members regarding the 20-something million out-of-school children which are prominently in the northern part of the country. And just recently has also said that Nigeria has disappointed Africa and the entire world. Quite uh, bold statements coming in from uh, former President Chibonushiko Basinjo. Very concerning statements, I might add, as well. Right. I think it's quite very, very concerning. And we always want to appreciate him whenever he speaks. You know, if there is someone you want to talk about who actually loved this country very well during his government and outside, I should say, is President uh, Olusegun Basinjo. And you also want to have his view in virtually every uh, issue. Yes. Now, talking about uh, Jal Major, you recall that I think... Uh, a non-Northern state president created al Majari School. Mm -hmm. And we expect that to have, you know, get much more support from President Muhammad Buhari. Yes. But Muhammad Buhari, 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 for me, never did anything to support al Majari School. And people started going back. He also starts nomadic uh, uh, education, which uh, is quite uh, instructive and good one. But you see that even the Northern part of Nigeria are not doing something consciously to actually do it you know uh and you see that we have, we have about 19 state uh, government from this if these people come together and have a policy you know that would discourage such thing because i i, I think uh, it's not religion it's part of some people's principle yes because even god said anything you cannot cater for i, I did not force it on on you. on you that simply means that you should take care of what you, you know can. Take what you can manage. Don't take beyond what. So I think until there is a caution or there is a kind of punishment of whoever did so, so that when you can cut a, a almajuri, trace it back to the to the family yes. and make sure you give them, you know, what they are expected to have. So I think that would have bring caution because you know, like President uh, Pastor just said, we are breeding future Boko Haram because if they don't have anything to lose, you know, in this world when you have something to lose. You know, you remember your mother, you remember your father, where you're coming from, the integrity. And you have basic education to also think right and, and left. You know what is good for you. Because for me, those children do not even know what is good for them. They see it as fun. They, they just see it as fun because their parents have, you know, pushed them, push them to push do Pushed them it. and they are accepting the narrative. But, if, but you know, you don't choose parents. And that's why they must go and uh, 
tackle those parents very well. You know, children doesn't choose parents. I, I mean, it, so, it, it doesn't only stop at the Almajiri children, that the Almajiri children system, which has been on for decades. Let's come back here to Abuja, where you'd find in places like Wusi too and the, and the rest, women mostly with their young children standing Parading, at, yeah. you know, traffic, traffic stops or traffic lights and waiting for cars to stop. And then they send their children to go and beg for arms in traffic right. while their mothers are sitting on sitting the cops. Down. I recall, uh, I just saw it today, that Wiki said uh, beggars should leave the street. Yes, the, I, uh, it wasn't the news this morning. Uh, yes, I had, so I read it somewhere. Uh, but the fact is that, you know, you know, we must also look at poverty. You know, in as much as we're talking about it, poverty is also an issue that we must tackle. Because if you look at like the narrative you are saying, we have also seen non northern person yes. who will send their children to actually cater uh, to look for something to cater for to their needs. So I think poverty needs to be tackled as well. Yes. You know, and that's why if you get them, get them to a place where they can actually learn some little little little, little things, so that by so doing they can actually move away from uh, from. I think. It's quite instructive that those governors, because everything is federal government, federal government, which is quite wrong. Those states need to start doing something. And some of them, you could recall that some of those uh, governors actually marry women in numbers. Yes. So because they said they want to reduce poverty, they mm -hmm. want to reduce, you know, something bigger, which is a good, but you need to go further to empower those we may know this Netflix and a lot of things are there that they can use to empower empower them. So I think it's very instructive. When you also talk about the uh, president talking about uh, that we have lost our position globally, globally not and only in Africa disappointed and disappointed Africa. 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 Well, in as much as I always want to appreciate him because uh, when we talk about this fourth republic, yes. uh, I think President Olusha Gumbasanjo has done way more than all the presidents. I think I should say so because he created a lot of agencies. You know, create a lot of solutions. Even though he has own political issues as well, but others did not sustain what he sustained. Because, and for me, as a political person, I think he also gets it wrong. You know, when you are handing over to the next person, sometimes you need to hand over to somebody who can continue your legacy, your trajectory, the so way so you are you doing things. Yes, the, the so, so the succession, uh, you know, plan was uh, part of accurate. his problem because you could see that this person I want to give power is bad. It could be bad, but can it sustain what you're actually if yes, doing? Go ahead. Exactly, the go ahead. So those are the things, you know. Perhaps Nigeria is like a system. You know, governance is like a system. So if you create a system, look at him now. He created ESCC, ICPC, NHIS, uh, NHIS, you know, CCCD. <laughs> uh, they are still <laughs> existing. Yes. So it's a system. So if you have such system, system in governance as well, I think by now would have moved move more. So administratively, yes. Governance, you know, so to some level, you could see even the uh, successor also trying his own part. So we need a president who will continue to see far, not now. Because if you look at it now, most of the things we are suffering now is what we have actually overlooked and does, did not take serious. Look at the first subsidy remover. It's something that Jonathan has said, let us let it go. By now, would have been strong enough to we actually would have, would have grappled with all the effects, exactly. and the economy would have stabilized, would have stabilized by now. So, too. these are the things. So, we must move beyond personal, you know, interest to look at solution uh, orientation. But in terms of we have disappointed, we are the largest Africa uh, black in the but world. Are we still standing so, as a giant of Africa? What you look at economy and look at population, yes, <laughs> because if you look, go to other countries, they also tell you that you are giant indeed, yes, because if you look at the population. It's enough for us. Our population also come the uh, uh, the economy, you know, the large economy. If I look at the industry we are having, Dangote, you know, is adding to what we are, why we are highly being called giant of Africa. Yeah. So I think we need to do more. All we need to do is just to make sure that we are focused. And that's why I have issue, little issue with this uh, administration. Up to now, I have not seen a blueprint that talks about short term, medium term, and long term economic plan. Of this administration, you know, we are still just, just like things we saw in the past that the seven point let, agenda. Let me even go clear to Obasanjo again. You have what is called needs, mm -hmm. national economic empowerment, development. But, but, but we, have, we have something called the the renewed hope agenda in this particular. The renewed agenda. hope is a, is a general nomenclature. We have to see the operationalization because you recall when we have needs in the federal government, we have seed in in states and we have needs in local government and the. 
private enterprise also key into it. So we want to key into your economic agenda. It's very key. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ali Elias. I must thank you so much for always finding the time to come here. Thank you. Anytime we have a conversation, it's always informative. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, that has been Dr. Alio Elias, who is um, an economist and a political analyst, a passionate Nigerian that has been lending his thoughts to uh, some issues of national interest. And of course, as Dr. Alio has mentioned, it's not about uh, the short-term solution, but a future projection and a future plan to ensure that the lives of Nigerians become better.